In this video, let's talk about the ischiorectal fossa. The ischiorectal fossa is also called as ischioanal fossa. It is a wedge-shaped, fat-filled space that is situated on the each side of the anal canal and below to the pelvic diaphragm. The two fossa communicate with each other behind the anal canal. They help in the dilatation of the anal canal during the process of the defecation. Let's see the surface view of the ischiorectal fossa. This is the anal canal, the perineal body, sacrotuberous ligament, and this yellow color fat filled space is the ischiorectal fossa. This green color is the perineal membrane, this is the urethra and the vagina. The base of this fossa lies on the skin over the anal region of the perineum and the apex is directed upwards and laterally. Each fossa measures about 5 cm in length and 5 cm in width. The width can be slightly more. Now let's talk about the boundaries. To know about the boundaries, we should know the labeling of this diagram. So this is the anal canal. And this is the ischiorectal fossa. This is the white line of Hilton. And this is the circular muscle coat of the rectum. And these are the muscles. Those are included in the external anal sphincter. This is the deep part, superficial and the subcutaneous. This muscle is the levator ani. This is the inferior fascia of the levator ani. This green color is the fascia lunata. The space present in between these fascias is called as the suprategmental space. This is the obturator internus muscle. To know about the obturator nerve, you can click on the I button. And this fascia that covers the muscle is the obturator fascia. This yellow color is the ischiorectal space. And this canal is called as the pudendal canal. This is the falciform process of the sacrotubus ligament the perineal fascia and the perianal space. This is the perianal fascia. It also contains fat. Now let's talk about the boundaries. This is the lateral side and the lateral boundary is the fascia covering the obturator's internal muscle and the ischial tuberosity. And now coming to the medial boundary. The medial boundary is by the fascia that covers the levator ani muscle and the external anal sphincter. So this is the fascia. And now coming to the posterior boundary. The posterior boundary of ischiorectal fossa is by the sacrotuberous ligament and the anterior boundary is by the posterior border of the perineal membrane. As you can see it here, this is the sacrotuberous ligament that is the posterior boundary and the anterior boundary is formed by the posterior border of this perineal membrane. This forms the anterior boundary. The floor of the ischiorectal fossa is formed by the perineal skin and the roof is formed by the meeting point of the fascia that covers the obturator internus muscle and the inferior fascia of the pelvic diaphragm. So this forms the roof of the ischiorectal fossa. Now let's talk about the recesses of the ischiorectal fossa. The ischiorectal fossa extends anteriorly above the urogenital diaphragm forming the anterior recess and posteriorly deep to the sacrotuberous ligament that forms the posterior recess. And behind the anal canal it is continuous with the opposite fossa and it forms a horseshoe shaped posterior recess. This is very important the horseshoe shaped posterior recess. And now coming to the contents of the ischiorectal fossa. The contents of the ischiorectal fossa are the ischiorectal pad of fat. You can see it here. The first content and the second content is the inferior rectal nerves and the vessels. You can see it in this diagram. These are the inferior rectal nerves and the vessels. And the third content is the perineal branch of the fourth sacral nerve. 
It enters the posterior angle running over to the levator ani and it reaches the sphincter ani externus and it innervates the sphincter ani externus. So this perineal branch of the fourth sacral nerve is present here. And the fourth content is the posterior scrotal nerve and vessels. The posterior scrotal is in males and in females that is the posterior labial. These vessels cross the anterior lateral part of the fossa and they enter the urogenital triangle. So this posterior scrotal or posterior labial nerve and vessels are present here. And now coming to the clinical correlation. The first thing in the clinical correlation is the ischiorectal abscess. The ischiorectal fossa is prone to infection due to its location. The infection may occur from the boils and aberrations of the perianal skin or from the lesions within the anal canal or from the pelvic infection or rarely via the blood. So this is formed because of boils or aberrations of perianal skin and from lesions of the anal canal and from the pelvic infection or by the blood rarely. It often forms abscess that is called as the ischiorectal abscess. The fat in this fossa is loosely arranged therefore the swelling can occur without tension or with little pain. The infection may readily pass from one fossa to the another fossa through the recess that is called as the horseshoe shaped posterior recess. So this is important because of the clinical point of view. As the ischiorectal fossa does not contain any important structures, so it can be incised easily to drain the abscess. In some neglected cases, the abscess may burst into the anal canal or into the surface of the perineum and they form the ischiorectal type of the ischiorectal fistula or the fistula in ano. So this is the important point. In some neglected cases, it causes anorectal fistula or the fistula or, or the fistula in ano. The fat in the fossa provides a cushion like support to the rectum and the anal canal. The loss of the anorectal fat is mainly present in the children in some diseases like diarrhea and it can cause rectal prolapse. Occasionally a gap exists between the tendinous origin of the levator ani muscle and the obturata fascia. This gap is called as the hiatus of squalby and sometimes the pelvic organs above this gap can herniate into the ischiorectal fossa. The anorectal fistula because of its common appearance. Let's see the track of the fistula. It arises from here and it comes like this. So this is the tract of the anorectal fistula. The pudendal canal has a pudendal vein, a pudendal artery and a pudendal nerve. So guys, this is all about the ischiorectal fossa. If you like my video, do subscribe to my channel. And do look at some of my recent videos and playlists.